All right, let's talk about this helmet for a minute. Um, it has been pointed out to me on the RPF and a bunch of other sites, including my own experience with this helmet, which is the Marvel Legends Star-Lord helmet, uh, that these lenses kind of suck. They're workable. I mean, they catch some light. You can kind of see what's supposed to happen here. But they have this kind of red film on it that I'm sure, well, let's see. Hopefully I can get it to focus and show you there. Um, it's not, not great. These would probably be better if they were not like an opaque red. And uh, they're also not screen accurate. The, the pattern in the eyes is supposed to be a grid, and this is just a collection of dots. Now I have a, I have a laser cutter in my shed, and one of the things I've been thinking about doing is trying to tear this thing apart and get into the eye lenses and replace whatever's in there with something a little better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and film this. I'm wearing a body harness with the camera on, so there's a good chance I'm not going to be able to keep this focused or in the frame the entire time, but I will do my best. And we're just going to start by opening this thing up here and getting some of this crap out of the way. Uh, okay, so I have, I have discovered that uh, a flathead screwdriver, like this kind of thing, uh, can actually turn these obnoxious triangular headed screws. Um, I've never seen ones like this, but I guess they are somewhat common. I don't know. Apparently you can get a, a screwdriver bit set that can work with those things. Um, probably not going to bother. Probably just going to see if I can unscrew these things and uh, get it done with what I've got on hand. So let's get started. And it always helps to keep a cup handy for uh, keeping all your spare parts in so that you don't lose anything important as you go. We can just slip this through this bit here. Like that. And there we go. Let's get these things out. It's a bit of a flexible plastic on these things. The uh, the clips, that is, not the helmet itself. There we go. Well, let's see if we can remove the front plate anyway. Maybe that'll just simplify things here. I will say, actually, this flathead screwdriver is doing a pretty decent job with these screws. I'm sure the only reason they uh, use the triangular head ones instead of normal Phillips or normal flathead is so that anyone who's trying to replace the batteries wouldn't make a mistake and accidentally unscrew the wrong thing. Little did they know there's idiots like me out here who want to take the whole thing apart anyway, right? Okay, so I don't know what's still holding this on. Let's get the batteries and battery pack out of here. You know, I was expecting screws on the underneath of this thing, and I don't see any. Um, so I'm not sure what's still holding that on. It looks like this is probably kept in by the side plastic, too. That's going to be a pain in the ass. All right, well... <clears throat> Let's start taking the rest of these out. Let's try slipping this in there and see what happens. Just want to see if I can separate this a little bit. It moves a little. Not as much as I'd like to see yet. Oop. the screwdriver in here and I've got my finger in. I'm just trying to be very careful about how I apply separating force to this. It looks like it's coming but it also feels like something maybe at this end is holding it in. It out yet but I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew the other side just in case the entire interior is somehow screwed together like in between the outside of the, uh, the helmet and the inside. I, I, I don't know it's just the way it's moving kind of suggests to me that maybe the front plate and the uh, sides 
are connected. I think that is all of the screws that I can see on the interior holding this thing together. So again, let's just uh, see if I can slip something in here. Okay, so something I just learned is when you are trying to separate the inner shell from the outer shell, there's a tab here that slots into this thing when the back of the helmet is closed. But you can also just slip a screwdriver in there and kind of torque a little bit and it will pop the frame loose because they're all kind of snug fit. You see here onto, uh, let's see if I can get that to focus. There's a hole and a post, and they're kind of snug together like that. Um, so I did manage to expose the electronics in here, which I will say look deceptively simple, all things considered. Ah, ah, wait a minute. I just pulled up and towards me, and it looked like it started to come here. Like that. Can I do it on this side? Plastic is always a bad, scary sound, right? Now that I've freed the two sides, maybe if I can get something in here, in the top, like that, I can start spreading it out. Yeah, oh, here we go, here we go. It's looking like it's starting to go. It's happening! Oh, okay. The hinge. Oh, I see. The hinge just came out on both sides here. Okay. Well, this is fine. Um, this is not broken. I just managed to unseat this. And uh, I guess I'll just have to slide it back in once I figure out how all of this works. But at least that is now out of the way. And we are working on seeing if there's anything else holding this together up here. There. You can see the eyes are starting to come back now. Um, I'm, I'm almost in. I'm almost in, but you have to take the whole damn thing apart. And I think I've just figured out what's holding this on. It's these fucking pipes right here. I didn't even think about this, the outer pipes. Um, maybe? I don't know, that shouldn't be holding it though. That shouldn't be part of it. Let's see. So, I pulled this, and I was not recording at the time, but uh, what, what happened was this part came out here, which is fine, it's the switch, and the whole right side of the face seems to have come out, and what I have seen so far is that uh, you've got some holes here that snug in under the screw holes there, which is part of how this thing's held together, which is also part of why this thing's such a bear to get apart. Um, let's see if I can do the same on this side. And I have to flex it in and pull apart. He says right before it breaks irretrievably. Yep, there, there. You see, you see what just happened? There we go. That slides out like that. So here's the molded plastic plates for the sides of the head. We are getting there, but the, none of that is what I really wanted to get behind. Uh, the real, real piece de resistance in here is this thing on the front of the head and I have no idea what is currently holding that on I don't see any screws or any further work I've got my hand in there so you can see like it does separate a little bit but something at the bottom of the jaw is holding it and I don't see the source or what is currently holding this all together Let's see. Okay, here is my current suspicion. This front part here, this is a separate piece. This thing that, uh, whatever the pipes lead into here. This is a separate piece and it goes from here into here and joins into this part. And you can see it's got a little post right here where it anchors uh, that I tried pulling out only to realize, look at that, there is, like a melted over plastic post in there. So getting this out will be kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, 
uh, but I'm going to just get a knife and see if I can trim the hole a little bigger. I've started to figure out why this is such a pain in the ass, and it's because this is really well engineered to its credit. Um, let's see if I can get the focus inside the eye socket there. You can see a screw going this way into uh, the, the mask, uh, whatever, between these two parts here, sandwiching it together. Okay, assuming I haven't broken anything yet, I cut this thing out here uh, by just widening this hole a little bit from the inside with a knife. This came out, this mushroom-headed thing, and then I was able to slip a screwdriver under here, and you can see on the other side there's a tab that just kind of gets snapped in there, and it looks like... The world's greatest ad model. So... Basically, if I can get whatever's holding this at the bottom together to come apart, I think we'll be in business. Oop, okay. Well, that was sudden. But also, progress. Look at that. I don't think I broke anything. I guess we'll find out. I have to do the same to this side now, so let's see if I can just cut this thing out of here. I'm gonna just... Put this in here like that, and there we go, you see, you can just kind of lever that out. And then I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the other side, where I'm going to just slip this in here. There we go. That's it. One more. There we go. Okay, so... If I have done this properly, there we are, look at that! Hello, Star-Lord, my old friend. This is the whole front of the face here. Oh, what an obnoxious assembly. Most of this, yeah, there's there's some extra screws on the inside here. Um, yeah, look at that. This is a little loose now that I've done what I've done, but I can probably tighten everything back up when I put it back together. Some triangular screws holding that on, but that is not nearly as interesting as what we have right here, which suddenly resembles a cyborg more than anything else. But there are the eye lenses, look at that. There you are, you beautiful bastards. Let's get you out of there and see what we're working with. This is actually good. All of the electronics and everything came apart as uh, one discrete piece here. And I guess this is, you know, your Bluetooth circuit and everything. What is what is the actual circuit in here? It's kind of neat. Let's get that focused. There's a QR code. I'll let someone figure that out. There we go. Everything involved in making your own light-up idiot Star-Lord helmet, right? There are some speakers by the front of the mouth, which I had not realized until just now. And there are no speakers by the ear, as, at least as far as I've seen. Yeah, I'm I'm dumb. Okay. In my, in my earlier video, I thought these were speakers for some reason. That is most assuredly not the case. It looks like the sound comes out of that area right there by the batteries. Well, serves me right, I guess. Anyway, let's see what we can do about these godforsaken lenses. And you can see the screws here here. These things were uh, part of what the, I guess, interior structure of everything was holding together, which is kind of surprisingly good engineering, I have to say. If I had to fight this much to get this thing out of there, I worked on cars that were easier to access. Although, that's maybe not saying much. Separate screws, separate cup. Easiest way to stay organized so that at the end of things you can lose all your cups and have no screws and go, what the hell, what happened, oh god, oh god. There we go. Okay, so I've unscrewed this. Wow, look at that bastard. It's not really what I expected to see in there, to be honest. Um, well, it's going to be a bit more complicated to replace than I initially suspected, which sucks a little bit. It's it's kind of... here we go. It just shines out from the middle on either side, I suppose. Let's get this thing off of here. It just kind of slips off. And there we go. That's, that's all of our plastic. Um, I almost wonder if you could just replace this with a clear piece instead. Something might work better. I wonder how hard that would be to shape. 
let's take a moment and I will pop the batteries back in and turn this thing on and uh, just kind of see what we're working with as far as the electronics goes. It is literally one LED per eye. I'm a little disappointed in that, to be honest. Interesting. Okay. I guess if you slot that thing back on. It does kind of glow, doesn't it? We can do better. We can rebuild him. The real issue is going to be figuring out something that will comfortably fit in there, but uh, I will spend a bit of time and try and do so. Let's see. Do I have any way of determining... This has got to be like... Probably three volts going to this thing. Let's grab a voltimeter and see what I can measure. Okay, uh, I have another voltimeter now. The display on this one's a tiny bit broken, but at least it reads accurately, whereas the other one is not. And it looks like the reading I'm getting off of this when it's lit is 4.5 which makes a ton of sense considering I have three uh, AAA batteries in there, but that's just telling me what these wires are uh, carrying to the front of the face here. And uh, I would hope the LEDs themselves don't actually run off 4.5 volts because they won't last that long otherwise. They would uh, be very unusual SMT LEDs. But anyway, um, long story short is we have a wire running to the face with a 4.5 volt source and a fixed amount of space in which to play here. I can probably rig something up that'll work that will have to live inside this, uh, this cup here. There we go, because there's a tiny bit of room to work with in there, but really not much. Um, you know, the plastic is going to be of a fairly fixed size. I will have to sit down and scratch my head a little bit about how to engineer something that'll go in there because you may just need to mount LEDs around the rim of this thing here and I don't know if that'll show or not. Hang on. Let's see. Let's put this back here. These wires were threaded through these posts like that. And then this was slipped on there like that. That's it. There we go. And then I'm going to leave the plastic, the red plastic, out for the moment so that I can just look at how this slides on there. I, all right, so you wouldn't see any of those uh, additions or changes done on the outside of this part. So this is really the piece to replace, from what I can see. Um, this is... My, my hunch is a redesign of this with holes cut in uh, so that you could shine LEDs in a loop around would be necessary, and uh, I will play with that idea shortly. That's it for now.